I'm glad I scouted out where all the valves were, although they did tell me directly. They even said in the corner on the second floor, but still, I'm proud of myself for calling it ahead of time. I know this game like the back of my head. Let's adjust this valve. So many valves, but so what? Shouldn't matter if I loosen them all at once. Besides, I'm not a plumber, so it's not my fault if something goes wrong. Zack, look at this. This is it. This is what you call a shower. Any proper shower needs at least this much pressure, don't you agree? We went as far as masquerading as plumbers all in order to experience this magical moment. Now we're free to shower ourselves until we drown. Still, I'm surprised that trio had the gall to use an FBI agent as a shower repairman. Those three professionals are far craftier than they let on. You notice what they're up to, right? None of them who, none of them want to be the one who calls the repairman. So, they're all feigning ignorance to get me to adjust the valve instead. Such an entertaining town. Isn't that right, Zack? Zack? It's a bead! Fixing the shower led us straight to a dazzling jewel. Okay, so you gotta do side quests to get all the beads. Okay. I want to take a shower. Nice. Alright, I no longer have to buy perfume. Anyways, back to the murder investigation. I often love this game. like it. Don't do this to me. Oh, I got it. Okay. Cool. I'm glad that's working. Because <laughs> it sure wasn't uh, when it first started out. And that was a really big bummer. Because I thought that was a really fun quest. Man, the Switch is so great, because when I play games like this for Let's Playing, it's like, okay, I am going to sit down and get, okay, I'm just going to shut up because there's a cutscene happening. I don't know why I decided to bring that up now. Did you find Melvin? No, I can't find either of them. Either of them? Yeah, when I went home, it wasn't just my daddy who was missing. Mama was gone, too. This never happened before. Zach, we need to stop Professor R's plan no matter what it takes. It looked like he was going for a hug there and then he just Relax, went to talk Pat. to Zach instead. You don't need to worry about a thing. I'm sure that Melvin just stumbled across an important clue that stole his attention for now. And I'm sure he's protecting your mother while he's at it. Let's just leave the investigation to the local police and rest for today. They need to prepare a report for the HQ anyway. How about staying with me in my room until we find them? What? 
You don't need to worry. If it weren't I York, who I trust with all my heart, that would be really... Chef, I, I wouldn't like that. But I do trust York, so it's okay <laughs> and a very for me open. in this moment. It's a lot of fun at that hotel. But... Okay. I guess. The shower I'm works, too. You're a lady, so you take the bed. Zach and I will be fine on the couch. So that's it. We're just gonna. That's it. We just take the day off. Go to York's room with Patricia and review the case. That's probably the end of the chapter, is what it is. None of these rewards seem good enough to do. Alright, let's head out. Looks like the old frame rate's back. Maybe when Patty's around, the frame rate's bad. It's a beautiful day, Patty. Really? Seems kind of normal to me. Now that you mention it, yes, it is a normal day. I just felt like saying that. What? You know, sometimes you really get on my nerves. Oh, the water tower was one. I could have done the water tower. Anyways, enough of that, Patty. I guess he's just already in the room. Yep. Oh, she's fast asleep. It's like noon. Zach, the Clarkson family tree is nothing like we thought it was. You're talking very loudly considering she's sleeping right there. to reorganize everything we've uncovered so far. So tired, she fell right to sleep. I guess so. Was she up all night? Why? Why? Exactly. We're in a very difficult spot right now. I feel like this case is heading in a direction that would be extremely unpleasant for her. I've never felt anything like this during any of our cases thus far. I have to go to. Frida to make stuff, right? Yeah. Darn. Let's take a look at the link board. Evidence organization start. First, let's go back to the beginning. Lise Clarkson's body was found hanging under a bridge over the bayou, in a deserted spot close to where the bayou meets the Mississippi. The one who fired the pistol at heaven surely had no idea what he would find it. Speaking of which, Zach, Chuck, the man who started this race we're running, what's his occupation? Doesn't really matter at all, but he is a crawfish farmer. That's right. He's and he gives swamp farmer. tours. I actually thought that's what the answer and after would chasing be. a poacher's boat that crossed over into his farmland, he went up the bayou and was fortunate enough to find Lisa's body. I doubt it was a very pleasant experience for him. But, if not for his discovery, Lisa's body might have started rotting up there. 
He's a difficult person to be sure, but I don't think he's a bad guy. Chuck said something peculiar. He claimed the Clarksons were a little better when their son was still around. I don't know exactly what he meant, but we ended up meeting the person he was talking about, didn't we? Under very unexpected circumstances. Leonard Clarkson. He ran away from home, found his true self, then changed names. Sozak. Do you remember her name? Yes, I do. Helena Doma. The townspeople call her Lena. She was also known as Professor R while she plotted against the Clarksons. She's the mother of the new drug known as Saint Rouge. She must have also had a group of followers who worshipped her fanatically. Wait, group of when did the group of followers happen? I can see it now. Lena sprinkling down the red powder, corrupting every last pure and innocent girl in town. Not like Twin Peaks, though. Lena mentioned her plan each time we met. I don't think she mentioned it when we met in the clinic, but she must whatever. Have taken us for utter fool's sake. She thought she was always one step ahead of us, and that we'd never see the full scope of her plan. She's right, but that doesn't mean we won't eventually stop her. Well, her plan isn't complete yet, and I know we can still stop it. That's why we need to learn all we can about her. Her alias was Professor R. She was well learned in the areas of medicine and fire dynamics. Fire dynamics. By the way, Zach, you remember what weapon Lena used to murder BJ? Technically, oh wait, no, it was. I didn't really. We didn't really see what she was holding, but it seemed like a sharp thing. And she did kill him before the bomb went off. So I'm gonna go with this. A machete and an axe. Okay, I guess that's correct. Now that's a classic combo. Pamela and Jason Voorhees. Sad tale of a mother and son who truly loved each other. And perhaps it was also meant as a warning for young people who planned to go camping this summer. 1980, directed by Sean S. Cunningham. Friday the 13th. But my personal favorite character has to be the adult Jason, who first appears in Friday the 13th Part 2. I even cried when they showed us just how well he'd taken care of his mother's head. Good lord, York. Okay, Zach. I think that's enough of digressing for now. Oh! Ready to give me a straight answer? Oh, the fake answers go on fun uh, side tangents. Okay, well, I still disagree because she clearly killed him unless she knocked him out. Correct. She used a miniature bomb. Technically not to correct. Tell you the truth, she surprised me. That bomb was so well placed. Now I want to go back and choose all the wrong answers, dang it. In itself, yet still did amazing work on it. Yeah, that was, it's very convenient that they didn't have to model any exploded tables or chairs. Lena should have used that brain of hers for something more productive than that saga of revenge. For example, reviving Lucare's economy from the industrial sector. Widen your perspective, and you'll see that Louisiana is an industrial treasure trove. With her intelligence and her charisma, I'm sure she would have found some amazing opportunities. Such a tragedy. She should invest in, uh, what's that new company? BP Oil. That'll end well. Zach, there's one that was Louisiana, that right? That's, I'm, that, that joke depends entirely on the fact that the uh, oil spill was in Louisiana. Galena Clarkson, who was murdered in jail. Her body was dismembered, then rearranged into a V-shape. Patty and Melvin claimed it was a severed roots killing. But that doesn't make sense to me. And PJ Clarkson disapproved of it when I met him in the other world. He saw Galena's parts lined up and was overcome by an inexplicable fear. Tell me, who killed Galena? I, I, I think, I'm pretty sure this happened last time, but I love that. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Unfortunately, we don't have the answer to this one yet. And it's too big a problem to solve with mere speculation. The answer to this question may lead to a major turning point for this case. And the final turning point for this story. You know it's true, Zach. I only hope it doesn't push us down an avenue we didn't plan on exploring. Okay, so the oil spill was far enough out into the Gulf of Mexico that it didn't technically happen in any specific state. But it was very close to Louisiana. So, that was still a good cultured joke, and I stand by it.
Yeah, let's do some thinking here. York. It's all coming together. Zach, Zach do, do you remember PJ's, PJ's last, last words? words? This means hmm. there's still one more person out there who inherited PJ's blood. Huh. Interested that that wasn't said. Yeah! Oh yeah, we did get confirmation. Who that we've seen the band play before, I remember. But like, I don't know if we knew any of these people. But that's Tyrone on the piano. There's his the, the his white garment. And then yeah, uh, ah crap! I'm forgetting skateboard. Uh, name. And then, that's not, uh, Raven on the drums, is it? I don't think it is. God, I hope he gets no Xavier better. That's rad. Oh, fucking punch in the hour. Gotcha. Caught you red-handed. Okay. There's a lot there. But I'm going to connect some dots here. S ranking. Um that was a sickly woman in bed wearing a dragonfly pendant on her head. So, I am taking I am just I'm a I'm going to Take a big leap of faith here. I want to use that as confirmation that Patty's mother, Candy, is the third Clarkson sibling. That was her. And that we saw a black hand on the table. So that was Melvin taking care of her as well. And they apparently are the quote-unquote poachers, which is interesting, and we don't know why that is yet. Um, but that is that that uh, that's that's where I'm going with that. Um, yeah. No penalties. I don't even know how you get a penalty. Oh, they're called the pains. That's what the uh, enemy types are called. Cool. Sure. We're past the point of no return. All right, time for a Zach section, I would imagine, and I think we'll call it quits after that. Yo, yo. I'm almost there. Please. Am I crawling Stop. on the ground? Stop that noise. Yeah. I'm on my knees anyways. Lava? Lava baby? Is this the daughter of Shark Boy and Lava Girl I've been hearing so much about? I feel for you, but also it was bubbling pretty dang badly. You probably should have known to back up. Whoa! Underneath the ground! What is this, a Breaking Bad episode? 
Oh, those are the veins that show up when you go evil on the red seed juice. That's not good. Thompsonville, suburb of Boston, Massachusetts. Let me try and summarize. And Simon's this. still gone. Oh yeah. Helena Doman was the mastermind behind the entire incident, but Helena Doman was actually P.J. Clarkson's son, who had severed ties with the family. That should be daughter, but. Helena was also known as Professor R, the mother brain behind the drug known as Saint Rouge. That's right. She was responsible for everything? Not everything, but most of it. Almost everything, but according to her plan. But if you'd already figured out that much, why did you continue to stay in Lucare? Because we had to. You had to? Whatever for? The goddess was still there. The goddess? The goddess of fertility. Lise Clarkson's body. <laughs> Not her. She was as beautiful as a goddess, but she wasn't the goddess. She was just a tragic victim. Then who is the goddess of fertility? The person at the root of this case. Is it some kind of metaphor? I wonder if it's Patty. For example, the vast wealth that the I red wouldn't like that because she's like nine, but I wonder if that's where it's going. <laughs> the goddess of fertility embodied abundance on the outside. Okay, then probably not Patty. But Maybe it's inside, Candy. Maybe it's the mom. She was a hollow void. And that void was threatening to swallow up all of Lucari. I guess he's struggling not to puke right now. Also, we can definitely still hear that baby, which is strange. I would assume Malia can't hear it. I would assume that's Shut in his head. Up. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut <laughs> up! Are you okay, Mr. Morgan? Morgan almost sounds like a prophet talking about the end of the world. Vague, elusive, and intent on deceiving those who listen. But every now and then he adds an interval of truth. Patricia Clarkson is one of those. She's something special. Something irreplaceable to him. Jittering leg. It looks like he burned something other than firewood in here. Did he destroy something when he figured out we were coming? Maybe it's just a red herring meant to throw us off. I know how he operates. I can't take anything at face value. I'm so close to finding out where she is. So close now. The sound of a baby crying got him that agitated? Okay, so maybe he she may can't hear sick, the baby. Maybe it's from another but apartment. But that's still no excuse for this behavior. Let's talk about that. Instead of kicking your floor, perhaps it'd be wiser to invest in a soundproofing mat. Are you irritated, Belle? Yes, of course you are. You think we lack a common human trait, and that bugs you. We're crazy. Human refuse. That's how we look to you, isn't it? I would never go that far, but you did surprise me. It just doesn't seem like the kind of attitude one should display when in the company of others. Yes, we're sorry. We agree with you. It just made us remember time when that noise kept ringing out, but we couldn't stop it. That flight from Newark Liberty to Seattle-Tacoma, 
It was the first flight we took as FBI agents. The plane was shaking violently due to turbulence. And when we looked to the side, we saw a young mother cradling a baby. Swear he must have a thing for turbulent planes as well, because that's a big thing in D4. We got worried. So we spoke to her. Then the baby started to cry. It was so loud. We couldn't resist plugging up our ears. And since it was so loud, the rest of the passengers started glaring at us. At first, the mother and I waved our hands, trying to quiet down the baby. But our efforts were in vain. It never stopped crying. The more our anxiety levels rose, the louder its cries grew, shrill and piercing. As if they were heralding the apocalypse, we were powerless, and the baby's mother was helplessly bewildered. Once the plane landed safely in Tacoma, the baby finally stopped crying. I love the implication crying. that babies just effing hate uh, We Dorf heaved a sigh of relief and looked at the mother. Then she said, Whose child is this? Uh... We were shocked. So we asked her what was going on. Apparently, sometime after she boarded the flight, uh... that baby randomly appeared on her lap. Then it ordered her to call me over and kept sitting there as if nothing was wrong. Can you believe that, Belle? Bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. While we were talking, the baby disappeared. The being responsible for all that loud, grating noise simply disappeared without a trace. You've got a stand user on your hand, Zach. Ever since then, whenever I hear a baby crying, I remember that bizarre experience. Well, what do you think, my fairy? Was it some sort of sign? Anyways. <laughs>